Some new and very nightmarish polling numbers have come out for Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party of Canada. Every time I think these guys have hit rock bottom in terms of their support, somehow they come back to surprise me and gain the courage to alienate more Canadians and become less popular. This new Abacus data poll shows that less than a quarter of Canadians now support the Liberal Party. They only got 24% in this poll, losing 1% since Abacus lasted a poll. And somehow the NDP, who usually gains support when the Liberals lose support, also lost 2% since the last poll was done. The Conservatives gained 3% and are now sitting at 43% support. That is a 19% lead for the Conservatives, a monumental lead that you only expect them usually to get in individual provinces like Saskatchewan and Alberta. And now this is nationally. The Liberals literally swept the Maritimes back in 2015. And now the Liberals are probably going to lose most of their Maritime support. The Liberals might lose seats in downtown Toronto. They are uncompetitive in Vancouver, and they're now competing with the Bloc Québécois to see who's going to come in second place in terms of seat count. It's absolutely hilarious to watch. But before I get into some more of the deeper data that this Abacus data poll had, it's very interesting to look at, I just want to quickly plug the fact that I... Wyatt Claypool, I'm running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination. So if you live in Calgary Signal Hill, check out my website, wyattclaypool.com, buy a conservative membership and vote for me number one on your ballot when the nomination is called. It's likely going to be called after April because riding boundaries are changing in April because Alberta is getting a few more seats. Uh, Bo Ness and Greenbrier are being cut out of the riding and then we are gaining the Curry Barracks area and Lincoln Park. So if you live in this general area of the map of Calgary, buy a membership, support me, check out my website, wyattclaypool.com. Sorry for the shameless plug, everyone who doesn't live in that area. Anyways, so this is the demographic polling that we got, not regionals. The regionals are horrific for the liberals. And I don't want to belabor that point. The thing that is really nightmarish for the liberals is that they don't even compete when it comes to the biggest demographic that they need in order to win an election. Obviously, young people are important, 60 plus voters are important, every demographic of voters are important, but the really important demographic is the one that has the largest population, and that is the 30 to 45 year old demographic. Check this out. So between the ages of 30 to 44, the conservatives now win 45% support. That is insane. The Liberals aren't even second place. They are at 19% with the NDP at 20%. And the, again, the reason why this is happening is because the NDP and the Liberals decided that they don't need middle class voters anymore. They don't need non-pensioners. They don't need non-progressives. And all these people who are at the point in their lives where maybe they used to vote NDP and Liberal are now voting Conservatives because they don't want to be taxed to death. They don't want industries they are working in to be destroyed by environmental regulations. Regulations. They care about public safety. They care about family values and their being able to raise their own children. They care about all these things. And the NDP and the Liberals think that being standing up for public safety, not jacking up taxes, those are all optional things to win the next election. They think that there are enough downtown progressives in order to put them over the top. That's not true. That's why in these latest polls, they continue to lose voters and they're not gaining anybody new. Progressive voters in Canada are probably only altogether about 20% of voters, people who vote for socially progressive policies and don't care about the economics. The liberals think that if they just accuse the conservatives of being dangerous by saying that they're going to cut spending, which is true because we have way too much spending in this country from the government, that they'll be able to somehow gird up their fiscal conservative liberal base because in 2015, the Liberals were able to get in off of the backs of people who are softly fiscally conservative, but like the progressive policies of Justin Trudeau. But after seeing those progressive policies in play and that the Liberals are not at all fiscally responsible, those people have left a long time ago. And saying that the Conservatives are going to cut bloated government programs is not going to win them back. And the NDP is losing support too. Because it's not that, well, people who are disillusioned with the Liberals might like the purity of the NDP. The thing with Justin Trudeau, he's a very orange liberal leader. If you don't like Justin Trudeau, like chances are you're going to hate Jagmeet Singh. And even Jagmeet Singh's own personal popularity has fallen off a cliff, even though the NDP leader is usually popular just because nobody thinks they're a threat. He's not popular anymore because people do not see him and Justin Trudeau as being a very different person. He props up Justin Trudeau and then he blames everything on Trudeau and the conservatives, even though he has a lot of power. He's a very pathetic politician. I don't need to go too much into him, though. Justin Trudeau as well, and I'll pull up the Abacus data poll 
uh, is, like there are sort of the details right here. I want to go down to his personal popularity because I keep noting this and it's because it's absolutely true. Look at Justin Trudeau's popularity numbers right here. He's only seeing at 24% popularity with 57% uh, 57 unpopularity, neg negative impression of him. My thesis has been for a long time, and it's absolutely true, that Justin Trudeau has soul-sucked the Liberal Party so much since the Kretschy and Paul Martin years that nobody distinguishes the Liberal Party as being anything different from Justin Trudeau. With the Conservatives, Polyev, and maybe I'll pull up the, the polling results back up to make this point. If you look at Polyev's numbers, he has 38% approval, 36% disapproval. And that's mostly because the liberal media does a lot of attacks on Polyev. So his negatives are rising fast because basically the media is trying to destroy him. And so also it's hard to be able to gain a lot of name recognition as an opposition leader. So only the most partisan people have an, uh, have like an opinion about you. But the thing is that you'll notice that Polyev has an approval of 38%, but the Conservative Party is pulling at 43% because you don't have to like Polyev to like the Conservative Party. I like Polyev. I think he's doing great stuff, way better, leagues better than Aaron O'Toole. I would never try and run for a nomination for the Conservatives under O'Toole because he's effectively a liberal. Pure as Polyev is actually a conservative. And even if you don't love his personality, even if you don't love his personal positions on everything, you can like the general party's positions on things or like your individual MP. And that's why conservative party support is out of step with the actual leader support. This is the same thing with the NDP. Even though Jagmeet Singh is awful, people don't see Jagmeet Singh as the entire NDP. So he actually polls much higher in terms of his personal approval rating than the actual party's approval rating. Oh, okay. They actually did showed his, sometimes they don't show, Albuquerque doesn't show the NDP leader's approval rating. So he's now in the negatives. He's at 33% approval, 34% disapproval, which is really funny that there's still a lot of people out there who don't have an opinion about him. It really demonstrates that you don't have to care who the NDP leader is, but he's at 33% support, but the NDP is only at 18% in the polls because you can think Jagmeet Singh's a nice guy. He's not a nice guy. He's a socialist windbag who thinks that all of your stuff belongs to him. Uh, you know, Mr. Rolex, but so you can have a nice impression of him, but you can still not care about the NDP. The reverse is true for the conservatives. You can maybe not love everything about Polya, but you'll still vote conservative. With the liberals, if you don't like Trudeau, you're not voting liberal because the entire party is just Justin Trudeau. Every cabinet minister should be required to wear a Justin Trudeau mask when they show up to parliament because they are just Justin Trudeau. Since 2015, Justin Trudeau has gotten rid of all the independent-minded people, all the non-hyper-progressives. Bill Morneau is no longer around. There's a lot of other cabinet people who have been kicked out. Jane Philippa, Jody Wilson-Raybould, although people don't realize that Jody Wilson-Raybould is probably more left-wing than, uh, than Trudeau is. All the more independent-minded people were soul-sucked out of the party. So now all there is left is a bunch of yes-men for Trudeau. So if you don't like Trudeau, you're not going to say, well, I don't like Trudeau's personality, but I love the, I love the policy. That's why in all of these abacus data polls, as I pointed out over the last year, Trudeau's approval rating is almost exactly what the Liberal Party support is. This is the danger zone for the Liberals, because if Justin Trudeau steps down as leader, they'll probably fall further in terms of support. But with him around, they also can't win the next election. This party is going to fall into like a Kim Campbell era, where they are going to have to rebuild over the next 10 years. I could see the Green Party winning five or six seats in this next election, just because all the left-wing voters are just tired of their parties being competent. Doesn't mean the Greens are good, they're somehow even worse. But out of frustration over their parties gaining no traction, they might end up going to the Greens. And then the Liberals, Greens, and NDP are going to have to sort out the, sort themselves out over the next 10 years and figure out who's going to be the do not dominant left-wing voice in the next 20 years. I hope it takes them 40 years. I'd love to see them out in the woods in the Conservative Party to gird up its conservative bona fides and govern really strongly. The, the government needs deep reforms. This is not a situation where if we just get rid of the carbon tax, everything will be good. That's why, specifically in Calgary Signal Hill, my entire platform is the idea that we actually need to gut government of liberal policy. We need to go through all the regulatory books, all the legislation, just take a highlighter out, even if you're a backbencher, highlight bad regulations, and we'll just start chunking it out in large sort of reform, uh, like large sort of, you know, spates. Um, I'm getting the wrong word, but just sort of large pushes for reform. We would just start gutting the government books of all these terrible regulations and pieces of legislation. 
that would be a dream in my opinion. The conservatives need to eat their vegetables before they start passing their own policy. Definitely they should pass their own policy when they get into government, but there needs to be a strong focus on making sure that we roll back the entire Trudeau and part of the Kretchen and Paul Martin eras. It's been super toxic. Anyways, that should be it for me today. I might break down a little bit more of this abacus data poll in the future. I know you guys like me talking about polling because, you know, it's, it gives you a good feel about how the country is in a more microscopic way. And But other than that, I'll just quickly plug again the fact that I, Wyatt Claypool, am running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination. I always say it in that weird way because I don't say who what my name is at the beginning of the videos. So if you live in Calgary, Signal Hill, buy a conservative membership, visit my website, wyattclaypool.com. There's links there to go buy a membership. And also I have the legal fund, the Give, Send, Go link in the description of the video below as well. We're being sued by a billionaire developer for a nonsense defamation uh, claim where we somehow defamed him, even though our guest writer just kind of mentioned him in an article about O'Toole in which every piece of information about him was either public domain, easily verifiable, or it was based off previous reports by other publications years before who have never retracted their stories because they're fully accurate. Anyways, so if you want to pitch into that, it helps me out a lot. I've had to pay over $25,000 into defending uh, the National Telegraph. So any money at all does help loosen the burden on us and helps us be able to put out more content and expand our, you know, our, I guess our media empire, even though it's basically just me and Daniel Boardman at the moment. So other than that, I hope everyone has a great night and continues uh, watching our channel. Like, share, and subscribe. All those great things. Thanks for watching.